sequencing objectives in scheduling met customer due dates maximize machine or labor utilization minimize the following job lateness response time completion time time in the system overtime idle time work in process inventory johnson rules used to, to sequence n jobs through two machines in the same order we have three job a b c must path through machine one first and then machine two johnson rule a sequencing techniques for minimize total completion time for a group of jobs job times must be known in advance all jobs follow the same two step sequence two work center or machine that each job must go through list all jobs and times for each work center or machine choose the job with the shortest activity time if the time is in the first work center schedule the job first if it is in the second work center schedule the job last once the job is scheduled it is eliminated from the list repeat above steps working toward the center of the sequence example one use the information presented in the table and johnson rule to identify the processing sequence the total completion time and the idle time for machine one and two in days we look for the days to all the job a b c d we see that the shortest activity time is the job a on machine two we sequence this job as the last of the sequence and eliminate job a from the table and look for job b c d the shortest time activity is four on the machine two for job d we begin to determine its place at the end of the sequence and eliminate it from the table we have now B and C. C have the shortest time activity at machine one. We put it in the first place at the sequence and eliminate it. The remaining is job B. We put it in the center. Now we begin to determine the job on machine one and the machine two according to the sequence. First job C, machine one, this job take five days on machine one. It began from zero until five. And then job B, it takes six days. Five plus six equal 11. C and B will finish after 11 days. D will begin from 11 until 18 because it takes seven days. E takes three days. It began from 18 until 21. All the job finished from machine 1 after 21 days. 
machine to begin from zero, but it cannot work on job C until it finished from the machine one. Machine one will, will finish this job after five days. So machine to begin its work after five days. It take six days to finish job C, which equal 11. B take eight days. It will begin from 11 until 19. D begin from 19. It take four days. This job will finish after 23 days. A begin from 23 and take two days. All the job will finish 25. The two machine beginning their work and finished at the same time. So we have either time on machine one represent the difference between 25 and 21, four days. And the machine two stay for five days until job C finished from machine one. This is represent idle time also. Total completion time equal 25 days. Idle time for machine 1 and 2, 5 days on machine 2 and 4 days on machine 1. The total is 9 days. Example 2. Use the information presented in the table and Johnson rule to identify the processing sequence, the total completion time and idle time for work center one and two in days. We look for all the job and see the shortest work activity is two on work center two. So we begin to determine this job at the end of the sequence and eliminate this job from the table. We remain B, C, D, E. We look and see that 3 is the shortest activity time on work center 1. So we put job B at the beginning of the sequence and eliminate it from the table. The remaining is job C, D and E. The shortest time is 4 on work center 2. So we put C at the end of the sequence after A and eliminate it from the table. D and E, the shortest time is 7 on work center 1. So we put it at the beginning of the sequence after B. The remaining D put in the middle of the sequence. Now we begin to determine the work on work center 1 and work center 2. Work center 1 will begin B according to the sequence from day 0 until 3 because B take 3 days on work center 1. It will be finished after 3 days. E take 7 days. It began from 3 plus 7 equal 10. It will be finished 10. D take 10 days. It began from 10 plus 10 equal 20. C take 8 days. It began from 20 until 28. E take 5 days. It began from 28 
plus 5 equal 33. All the job will finish from work center 1 after 33 days. Work center 2. It must wait to take job B after work center is completed its work on this job. It began B after three days. This represents idle time. B take from three until nine. It takes six days. Three plus six equal nine. We now look for E. E not finished until yet from work center one. It will be finished after 10 days. We now at nine. So we must wait for day from nine until 10 to begin job E. Job E take 12 days at work center two. It began from 10 until 22. G take nine days. It began from 22 plus nine equal 31. It will be finished after 31 days. C it is finished from work center one. We now in after 31 and C finished after 28. C take four days. It began from 31 until 35. A, we will begin to take A from 35 until 37 because it take two days. All the job at work center one and work center two finished after 37 days. This is the total completion time. Either time for machine or work center one and two equal. Four days at work center one from 33 until 37. And the three days at work center two, zero to three, and one at work center two from nine to ten. Thank you.